In this video, I am going to build a turntable. What does that have to do with the train side sensor I am working on, you may ask? Well, watch the video to the end and you will know. Hello everyone and welcome to the IOTT channel. I am Hans Tanner. Welcome to all new subscribers and welcome back to everyone else. I am happy you made it here and thank you for your support of my channel. And if you have not done so already, please take a second to subscribe to the channel and activate the notification function so that you are in a premium seat when new videos come out. The most common method to drive a turntable, it seems, after some research, is using a stepper motor. There are several do-it-yourself videos available showing how to do that. A stepper motor is basically a brushless motor with two magnetic poles in the stator and a rotor that looks a little bit like a cogwheel. In a nutshell, the stator coils are polarized sequentially and with each change of polarization, the rotor advances one step. Typical stepper motors therefore have a set number of steps per revolution, either 200 or 400. With these characteristics, stepper motors are widely used in applications where precise motor control is needed, for example for 3D printers, robot arms or model railroad turntables. In recent years, however, the trend is going towards using PLDC or brushless DC motors for certain high-performance applications. PLDC motors offer higher torque and maximum revolutions per minute. And instead of using simple predetermined steps, they can rotate continuously and with the right controller it is even possible to implement so-called field-oriented control or FOC, sometimes also called vector control, which allows to set the orientation of the rotor in a continuous range from 0 to 360 degrees with no predetermined steps while maintaining a high torque on the driver shaft even at standstill. I always thought using a BLDC motor with FOC would be a nice concept for implementing a direct drive turntable, but never had an opportunity to actually try it. Now, just recently, M5 Stack came out with a compact PLDC motor with integrated FOC driver board, including I2C interface. So I thought that's a great opportunity to test the turntable concept. The motor is offered in two versions, one with, the other without slip ring. Unfortunately, the version with the slip ring was sold out, so I bought the light version. That means that conducting the DCC signal for the turntable track was not possible just like that. But I mainly wanted to run tests to find out how the motor turns and how repetitive the positioning is. Powering the locomotive on the turntable can be added later. For the rotary element I bought a pair of 6 inch Lazy Susans from Amazon. These devices make for excellent turning elements as they have built-in roller bearings and therefore have a relatively low turning resistance. I removed the center piece and increased the diameter of the center hole in the bottom disc just a little bit so that the hex shaft of the BLDC motor would pass without touching. Then I 3D printed a washer with a hex opening for the drive shaft and glued it to the top disc of the Lazy Susan. Finally, I 3D printed a frame to hold the motor in place and to provide the right distance so the bottom disc of the Lazy Susan does not touch the rotor of the PLDC motor and that's it. M5 Stack provides an Arduino library for the PLDC motor, so creating a simple sketch to make it run was a piece of cake. Since I only wanted to do some tests, I only provided functionality to rotate the turntable to an angle that I can set using the monitor. 
The value is entered in tens of a degree, so the range runs from 1 to 3600 for a full circle. Furthermore, I can set the maximum speed and the acceleration value it is using for increasing and decreasing the speed. I wrote the sketch so that after entering the target position, it first decides in which direction it will turn, then accelerates to the top speed, maintains the speed until it reaches the breakpoint, then decelerates to arrive at the target position. The result of the calculation is shown on the monitor, showing the distance in both turning directions and indicating the target position. And when the new position is reached, this is shown on the monitor as well. Now, one of the differences between a stepper motor and a BLDC motor with FOC is that the BLDC requires a position sensor, while stepper motors are usually a one-way road. The controller sends the step commands but does not receive position feedback. This has several implications for the design of a turntable. When using a stepper motor, we first must ensure that the maximum torque of the motor is not exceeded or the stepper motor will snap a step and we lose count and therefore positioning. Most turntable applications I have seen therefore use gears to reduce the rotation speed and increase the torque. I have only seen one example so far where a stepper motor was used in a direct drive approach to rotate the turntable. When using a BLDC with FOC on the other hand, direct drive is the way to go. The rotor angle can be controlled at any time and the current rotor position is continuously reported back to the controller. The second implication is that at startup the stepper motor turntable must be initialized. Knowing the position of the turntable is maintained by counting the step commands sent to the stepper motor, but this information is either lost if the system is turned off or at least it cannot be verified just like that during startup. So when using a stepper motor, part of the initialization is rotating the turntable until it passes a known position and the current position can be initialized. BLDC motors, on the other hand, need some sort of absolute position feedback to control the three-phase driver circuit. There are several ways to do that but the M5 stack motor is using a magnetic sensor that sits on the rotor shaft and that is why I was really interested to test this motor. That magnetic sensor is similar to the one that I am using for the purple head, but it has some functionality that simplifies the application for the speed control decoder I am working on. In particular, it has built-in functionality for revolution counting which reduces the workload on the processor for the trainside sensor application. So getting to know that chip was the initial reason for doing this turntable project. The third implication of not having absolute position feedback is that functionality that relies on it is not possible. Here is an example. If the turntable is in a locked position and I manually turn the table by just a little bit, that small position change is reported to the controller and it can take some action on it. In my sketch I programmed it that if a deviation of more than 0.5 degrees from the locked target position is reported, the turntable turns 90 degrees in the direction of the disturbance. For a real application this could be turning to the next track and it makes for a nice semi-automatic way to operate the turntable while moving locomotives to and from the roundhouse, for example. No button push anymore, no turnout command needed. Simply move the turntable a little bit and it will move in a controlled way to the next location. So after printing and assembling the turntable, I was ready for testing and at first try it was a complete failure. The turntable would barely move and on top of that it had some severe oscillations. 
The reason was that I did not adjust the PID parameters of the control algorithm to the weight and inertia of the turntable. And on top there was some play between the rotor shaft and the turntable, which made a proper control basically impossible. So I removed the play and started to adjust the parameters. If you are not familiar with how to adjust PID parameters, there is plenty of information available, for example, on this web page here. I certainly should spend a little more time on fine-tuning the parameters, but for the moment I have some settings that work reasonably well. For a turntable application, I am basically interested in three characteristics that I wanted to test. First, I want to see a continuous movement at all speeds. The turntable movement should not hesitate and then jump to compensate. This is of course more difficult to achieve with a direct drive than when using a gearbox approach as the reduction of the gearbox smoothens the movement. When using a direct drive, every change of the angle velocity transfers to some erratic speed changes of the rotating table. Here is the movement shown from several viewing angles. The rotation speed is set to 150, which means 1.5 full rotations per minute. As you see, it is somewhat okay, but I am not really happy with it. I am pretty sure it can be improved though by spending more time on optimizing the PID settings, so I need to spend some more time on it. I also noticed that the Lazy Susan has some spots with increased friction, so if I can remove those, that would also lead to a more continuous moving behavior. The second characteristic I want to see is positioning precision. When given a certain angle command, the turntable should always stop at the very same point, independent of from what side it approaches the target position. This of course is a precondition for properly lining up the turntable with the track. To test, I put a sticker on the side of the turntable and approached it five times from the left, then five times from the right, and then six times with alternating direction. I am very happy with the repetition precision when approaching always from the same side. On the other hand, I found an offset of almost one degree when changing the approach direction. This is too much, so I will have to investigate further. I have a hard time to believe the difference comes from the sensor itself. I rather think that it is the result of not very precise construction of the Lazy Susan and how it is installed on the 3D printed frame. It appears that it can slide back and forth a couple of millimeters, which may explain the deviation. The third characteristic to be tested is very small movements of a half degree. I issued a series of commands with position increasing by 0.5 degrees in one direction, then changed the direction and repeated the sequence in the other direction. This was actually pretty convincing. Each step appears to be of a consistent angle and the movement can clearly be seen, which means there is no directional offset on this small level of movements, which speaks for the sensor. So, for the offset in test 2, I think I really need to focus on the mechanical setup. What the test shows for my work on the train side sensor is that the magnetic chip works extremely well as position sensor. The stable resolution is about 0.1 degrees, so 3600 individual, repeatable and stable positions per revolution are possible. Furthermore, I like the rotation counter and the various modes the chip has. I certainly will talk more about that when I use it as locomotive speed sensor. I probably will also continue to work on the turntable as the initial test setup looks promising to me. The next step is adding a slip ring. My plan is to put two PCBs in the place where the roller bearing is put in some smaller balls and use the slip ring as ball bearing at the same time. 
And the other thing I am thinking about is replacing the BLDC motor by a PCB stator outside of the bearing with the rotor magnets glued into the top shell of the Lazy Susan, basically forming an Axial Flux BLDC motor. Inside the bearing there is enough space to place the driver circuit for the stator as well as the magnetic rotation sensor. If it works, that would be a super flat turntable design that could easily be scaled up for higher diameter turntables and larger modeling scales. Overall, I think that would make for an interesting turntable drive concept, but we will have to see. And that's it for this video. I hope this information was useful or at least interesting for you and it triggered your imagination for what could be possible using modern drive technology like PCB stators and axial flux PLDC motors combined with vector control. If so, or if you like this type of content in general, please click the like button below to let me know. It's free and it takes only a few seconds, but it helps a great deal with promoting this video and the IOTT channel in general to other model railroaders because YouTube likes the likes. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.